And as this battle goes on, I loved, loved for no reason that these straw huts just started to explode. Right? Like they were hit with missiles. Just explosion (laughs) after explosion. Like, it looked cool, don't get me wrong, but I'm like, how the fuck are they exploding? Lights. (laughs) Camera. And action. Welcome Welcome to the the I Remember Remember Liking That that Movie movie podcast. podcast. Remember those childhood movies you loved? We're going to watch them again and find out if they're still as amazing as you remember. Let's get ready to join Anna and Jimmy as they go back and watch those movies you remember being oh so awesomely good. Horror movies that scared. (laughs) Comedy movies that dared. And action movies so preposterously ludicrous that they defied the laws of common sense. Now, here's your hosts, Anna Santos and Jimmy Coates. Okay, welcome to the I Remember Like That Movie podcast. Uh, we are going back to 1982. <laughs> We're going to watch Beastmaster. Yeah, we are. What do you remember about Beastmaster? So little, it's ridiculous. I honestly I haven't seen this movie, I think, since the 80s. Um, pretty sure I saw it on TV in passing. I literally barely remember anything about it like i was unsure if i had actually seen it until i looked at some stills and i was like this looks really vaguely familiar but i think i was literally like a kid kid right uh me and my friends loved it this was i i did love the sword and sorcery mm. conan the barbarian the sword and the sorcerer was all of them the real to, to the bad to the good Actually, I don't know if any of them were actually really good. I think Conan was the pinnacle of (laughs) that's that's high as it got. But although Beastmaster, we'll get to the box off, wasn't like a huge, huge success. It was a joke that Dennis Miller on his HBO uh, show uh, said that HBO stood for, hey, Beastmaster's on because (laughs) it ran on HBO, TBS and TNT a lot. Like apparently, I guess someone joked that they bought the movie rights for like 10 bucks or 18 bucks (laughs) or something because it was on a lot. And I remember, yeah, it was on a lot, especially like TBS and HBO. Yeah. I probably watched it in full from start to finish a handful of times, but I do remember watching bits of it. Yeah. A lot, like 10 minutes in 20 minutes to go halfway through. All right. So let's start with the box office. For Beastmaster. Yes. It was released August 20th, 1982. It had a budget of $9 million. That's not bad for 1982. That's pretty high for 1982. There was a great uh, write up on it where they said it was, it was not a bad budget and none of it was spent on clothing. <laughs> they are so scantily dressed. There were a lot of loincloths, if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah. It opened at fourth place behind E.T., Friday the 13th, 3D, number three, Mm -hmm. and an officer and a gentleman. It had a weekend of 2.955 million, so almost 3 million, and a a, a total of 14 million. That's impressive. Did okay. And it was on TV a lot. I remember me and my friends rented it when it was at the store. Yeah. So I'm sure it did okay. I believe it did. It did fine. All right. Let's go to the tail of the tape. Beastmaster 1982 is an adventure fantasy. It is rated PG. Oh, there's no boobies in a PG movie. Oh, no. What shall ever you do? I don't know. And Tanya, it's, I think it's Tanya Roberts, is it? Mm. Who's the mom from that 70s show? Donna Pinciotti. Oh. Midge. Midge Pinciotti. I had such Tanya a crush Roberts on is her. in this one. Yeah, she was in like Sheena. Yeah, she was Donna's mom. Wasn't yeah, she was Donna's mom. Sure. She was in Sheena. She was a Bond yeah. girl. And it comes in in an hour and 54 minutes. That's a lot of movie. 
It's a lot of movie. Taglines. Oh, jeez. I, seeing this, if, okay, so if people are, we'll get to this when we're at the poster part. I feel like buying a van and having this put on the side of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Do you want to be that guy? Oh, now I do. <laughs> I, I don't care. My my kids might. <laughs> when, oh, when don't I, care. When I pick them up at school. The epic adventure of a new kind of hero. Hey. I don't even think that's even grammarly correct. The epic adventure of a new kind of hero. Yeah. Well, it's not. Yeah. Yeah, but it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that? Oh, no. Born with the courage of an eagle, the strength of a black tiger, and the power of a god. <laughs> That's These are terrible. <laughs> Those Dead. are the only two. This is such an indication of what's to come. Yeah. Synopsis. Dar, that's his name, Dar, Mark Singer, an ancient warrior with the ability to communicate telepathically with animal allies, sets out to stop the crazed plans of an evil high priest named Max, Max with two A's, and save his buddies, friends. Says friends, but it's like, and save his buddies. <laughs> this sounds like a fucking 12 year old's on the spot story in a creative writing class. <laughs> God, it's so accurate. <laughs> uh, and here's the poster. Mm-hmm. They're born with the courage of an eagle, the strength of a black tiger, and the power of a god. For those listening, that's up top. It has a ring with an eye on it. An eagle in the background, Gar, Mark Singer, holding a sword. That, I guess, is Tanya Roberts. Typical, very scantily clad. Uh, yeah. And then a black tiger. They're all sitting on a rock. Oh, that would look great on a van. <laughs> and then underneath, the epic adventure of a new kind of hero. Ah, it's very of its time. It is. It is very of its time. And I mean... Chances are, horrible. after this movie came out, this probably was on the side of a van. Yeah. Roaming around town, playing yeah. some hair bands. Because, you know. It's weird, because these movies were never huge in the box office, but I remember mm. there were a lot of them. Like, on video. Yeah. Because in the 80s, there were a lot of these swords and sorceries and dragons. and. I also feel like in the 80s, a lot of studios and even producers... They were just, there was more money available to them to yeah. do stuff. So they were just doing a lot. There was a lot more output. And it was popular. Obviously, there was a popularity to it. Like Dungeons yeah. and Dragons was really huge in the 80s. Mm. Was it not? It was. Um, yeah. Yes. All right. Well, let us go to Rotten Tomatoes. 14 one, four critics reviews. It's at 50%. Seven liked it, seven did not. <laughs> 25,000 audience reviews comes in at 54%, so a little more liked it than did not like it. Honestly, that's higher than I thought it would be, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. Yeah, when I first saw it, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like I thought it was going to be a lot lower. Yeah, I saw those numbers, and I was like, wow, that that's pretty high. I think Beastmaster is on the higher end of these sword and sorcery <laughs> movies. That's not saying it's a great movie, but I know there's a lot of them out there and there's a lot of them not that good. I like that. It's on the high uh, end. They're probably good, but not for what they wanted. Like they're like yeah. just bad good. All right. So let's start with the fresh. You may start. I am ready. All right. An okay time killer when I was 11 years old. Chuck O'Leary, Fantastica Daily, original score, three out of five. (laughs) The Beastmaster is a film shot through with love for the genre. James Evans, Starburst, original score, eight out of ten. That was nice, James. This film has ferrets up to here. Action cinema is so often coy about the portrayal of ferrets on the big screen, but the Beastmaster breaks taboos, never panning coyly away when ferrets are introduced, instead focusing in granular detail. Eddie Harrison, filmauthority.com, original score, three out of five. As soon as I started going into Beastmaster, I'm like, right, the ferrets. I, now I remember the ferrets. And they're awesome. 
didn't the ferrets act like a spy for him? Yeah, he he would hold them up, I remember, and talk to them or make like, yeah. clicking noises. And then they'd run off and go steal something for him or yes. look at something for him. Look, I remembered something. Yeah. This film has ferrets. <laughs> this film has ferrets up to here. What the Beastmaster lacks in luster and expense, it more than makes up for in sheer guilty pleasure enjoyment. Scott Weinberg, Apollo Guide, original score, 74%. Okay. All right. Here come the rotten. You may start. <clears throat> a kid-friendly version of Arnold Schwarzenegger's grown-up guilty pleasure, which really sort of misses the point. Rob Vo, Mania.com, original score, C. Extra goofy, but basic cable couldn't survive without it. Rod Thomas, Capital Times, original score, <laughs> one out of five. <laughs> Dang, Rob. Yeah. This is all about when the original... Reviews came out, out in 1982. Okay. So go ahead. I'm ready. According to Variety, the film opened to mixed reviews. Gene Siskel of the Chicago Tribune gave it two stars out of four and wrote that it isn't bad as much as it's over long. After one of the film's major bad guys has been bumped off, the film inexplicably goes on for another 20 minutes. In this sort of brainless adventure film, one climax is enough. Vincent, Vincent Canby of the New York Times thought the film was neither better nor worse than Conan the Barbarian and looks both big and cheap. Variety wrote, when the Beastmaster begins, it is very hard to tell what it is all about. An hour later, it is very hard to care what it is all about. Another hour later, it is very hard to remember what it was all about. <laughs> Kevin Thomas of the Los Angeles Times called it a veritable comic book adventure come alive. That succeeds on its own merits. Tom Milne of the monthly film Bolton found the film marginally livelier than Conan the Barbarian, but criticized the very basic acting of the appalling post sinking, the sets which resort to disconcertingly, Concerningly? disconcertingly, yeah, ramshackle models, and direction of supreme stodginess, which predictably uses helicopter shots to illustrate the Eagles' spying missions. When all it sees as a rule is the hero prancing on hilltops in self-conscious martial arts poses. <laughs> it's a little harsh. How are they? How was they? They didn't have drones back then. Well, the fact no, that they use helicopters. I mean, I'm sure once we see it, we'll be like they're probably like, yeah, helicopter shot. Yeah, helicopter. <laughs> That's horrible. I mean, especially if you see like the shadow of like the, the Yeah, helicopter. the helicopter and the blades going, that'd be awesome. <laughs> All right, IMDb. Uh, there were a couple really good ones, so there are some honorable mentions in this one. Okay. All right. So out of 25,000 user ratings, it comes at 6.2. So a little bit higher than... That's not bad. Yeah. You may start. Thank you. Best of a genre, I think. 10 <laughs> out of 10, Doc Allen. A distinctive icon in 80s filmmaking. Quit laughing. 10 out of 10. Adam J. Sherman. Adam J. Sherman. The most fun you can have with a sword and wild animals. 10 out of 10. <laughs> Sorry. So those were all 10 out of 10. So bad, it's great. 9 out of 10. Mr. Nevercold. Hugely enjoyable, sword-swinging fantasy fun. 8 out of 10. B.A. Harrison. Eagles and tigers and ferrets. Oh, my. 7 out of 10. Mark Waltz. The B movie master, six out of ten. Fluke Skywalker. The cheese master is what it should be called. Five out of ten smells like cheese. <laughs> That's good. Master of beasts, but not of cinema. Four out of ten. Gavin six nine four two. Just plain dumb. Three out of ten. Cabbage custard. <laughs> Name's funnier I like than that name. Said. Cheesy effects, terrible makeup, absurd costumes, worse acting. Two out of ten, Chris Bedford. It deserves to be forgotten. One out of ten, uh, Philip Manuel Neto. Yep. All right. Wow. So, so we got a 50-50 split. Some good, some bad. Yeah. It's, it's about even. Yeah. So the only thing left to do is to watch the trailer. Mm. And uh, make our predictions on the Beastmaster. Here we go. I'm ready. It 
was foretold by witches. It was conceived through sorcery, and it was to be destroyed by all that is evil. But the courage of one mortal saved it. And so, into an age of darkness, in a time of mysticism, sacrifice, and plunder, there came the only light, the Beastmaster. Born with the strength of a black tiger, the courage of an eagle, the power that made him more than any hero. over all beasts. Ah. He was the beast master. Behold the wonder. The horror. The fantasy. The challenge of the one warrior they call the beast master. Mark Singer is Dar. Tanya Roberts is Carrie. Riptorn is Mayak. John Amos is Seth. Together they take us on a fascinating journey back into unexplored times. Conquer your fears. Face the unknown. And discover the incredible link between man, animal, and all that is phantasmagorical. Dungeons, dragons, and Dar. The Beast Master. The epic adventure of a new kind of hero. <laughs> that looks awesome. <laughs> that hair. That uh, hair. Oh. I didn't see so one dragon. <laughs> no, but apparently we're going to talk about them. The dungeons and the dragons. Yeah. I saw a dungeon or what looked like a dungeon. I didn't see no dragon. Like a dungeon. I don't know. Oh, God, this is going to be so bad. I just hope it's so bad. It's good. Yeah. And I walk around being like, you need to watch this movie because I can't believe it happens. Yeah. Yeah. Dar. Dar. Wow. Yeah, I think it looks... Uh... <laughs> It looks pretty, yeah, pretty cheesy, but in a fun way, hopefully. Hopefully. I mean, there was some action moves. There was some sword play. There was some very bad 80s hair, which is always nice. Apparently, there's also child sacrifice. Odd, yep. but okay. Um, Tanya yeah, Roberts no. looked like she was almost about to lose her clothes, but I don't think she really No, I don't think she no. loses them. No. I'm sorry. Mm. I know. Rip torn <laughs> of all Rip people. Torn, isn't it? John Amos. Yeah, this should be interesting. Yeah, yeah, uh, it looks like something. Yeah, yeah. that was. Oh. Um, there were choices made. Yeah, Janet Jones is in that movie. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, she's one of the witch women. She's one of the witch women. Yeah, who has all that makeup? Makeup on. I think they had the makeup on to look their faces all, but they had. I think they're in slinky. Yeah stuff yeah well of course they are because like I, why would you hire janet jones <laughs> to like cover up her face oh my god all right well we are going to go watch beastmaster and when we come back we are going to review it you heard them movie time let's all go to the lobby and get ourselves a treat and then watch a classic kick-ass movie from whenever the one we're about to watch was made. <laughs> All right. Holy shit. Wasn't that something, kids? <laughs> <laughs> Eagles and tigers and ferrets. Indeed. Did you watch 1982's The Beastmaster? Oh boy, did I ever. Your initial thoughts. <laughs> this is one of the shittiest movies I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. It was so bad, but not so bad it was good. <laughs> so you're thinking that it's up there with Steel Dawn? Yeah, yeah not as bad as Steel Dawn, but pretty darn close. 
pretty dark close. Mm. What are your thoughts? Tell me your thoughts. Well, I made a crack at the synopsis that it was written by a 12 year old, like mm. writing his fantasy story. This was shot like a 12 year old. Mm. And that 12 year old was like, I don't care about continuity. <laughs> I don't care about dialogue or effects. We need to see titties. And we need a hero swinging his sword on top of a mountain or rock formation like all the time. <laughs> he did that so many times. <laughs> For no reason, he needs to sparagly appear on a mountain swinging a sword. <laughs> okay, my one of my thoughts, because I was like, why does this seem so familiar? Why does this seem... And then I realized, I'm like, this movie is playing like an elementary school production of this movie. Yeah, yeah. It, it just exactly that and i can tell you right now john amos was the only one that i was like why are you acting like this is a real movie <laughs> you're the only one yeah because this movie is bad i argue is it bad like still dawn mm. or does it take its place like grizzly or anaconda actually i don't think you liked anaconda like so i didn't like skin. anaconda no i did no, but we agreed did. on grizzly was so yes. bad like grizzly so, was so bad. bad it was good but it was good yeah yeah Steel Dawn was just so bad. This is somewhere between Grizzly and <laughs> Steel Dawn. Now, it has the potential. Look, if I was super drunk and I had a bunch of friends over, this would be a so bad it's good. When you're watching it by yourself? <laughs> yeah. So it, watching it with friends, this this could be a fun movie. Oh, yeah. Because you've got someone to riff off of. There was no one there. Every time I was like dramatic much... Why is he only making sounds for the hawk, but he speaks to every other animal in English? Yeah, like he's, I can't yeah. he talk to the horses? Yeah, I don't know. All right, well, let's go through this land of mythology and bad dialogue where there were dungeons, but the trailer lied, there were no dragons. None whatsoever. But I did forgive it because I really thought there was no boobies. And there were. I was surprised by the boobies. Not just Tanya Roberts in one no. of the best scenes in the movie, but other boobies too. Tons of men boobies. <laughs> so totally equality. Actually, I think it was more one-sided, the amount of man boobs well, compared to female Also boobies. the amount of asses. Because every every man was wearing either so a loincloth. So many cloth, asses. And every time they moved, you're like, butt cheek, butt cheek, butt cheek, more butt cheek. Why? Why does nobody have pants? As Why soon as I saw John him? Amos, I'm like, damn, I see John Amos's ass. <laughs> right. And it was it was right out there. It was just out there for everybody to see. He had his ass out. Okay, Wikipedia do doesn't have a ton on this. So I did peruse it because it was very short. Like it was very small. <laughs> so I have I had to add a couple notes to remind myself to talk about some stuff. Okay. Um because this movie, there is a ton that happens, but nothing happens because of it. Or yes. stuff happens just because. Yeah. And there's, there's a lot no real explanation for anything. No, not at all. <laughs> You're, You're just like, oh, so this is happening now. Oh, okay. What? And if I pronounce something wrong, I apologize to people listening. And you're a big <laughs> fan of Beastmaster. So, I don't think the Beastmaster stands are going to get him. <laughs> in the kingdom of Aruk, Aruk, Arak, Arak. Yeah, that's how they pronounced it in the is movie. It? Okay. Yeah. Witches tell high priest. I thought it was Max. It's Mayax. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Because I made fun of him. Like they just call him Max. <laughs> it's still stupid, Mayax, but whatever. A prophecy that he will die at the hands of King Zed's unborn son. Mayak sends one of his witches to kidnap and kill the child. But before she can, a villager rescues the child and raises him as his own son in the village of Amur. Okay, we have to go back. Mayak is with his bitches. And they're like, this kid is going to kill you. And he's like, yeah, I'll just kill the kid. The king busts in and is like, I hear you're sacrificing kids and shit. And Mayak is like, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> like, he doesn't even deny it. I mean, accurate, yeah. That's yeah. exactly what happens. He's like, yep. Yeah. Uh, okay. okay. My God wants them. And then, like, he, the king's like, you're banished. And Max is like, I got to kill one more kid. And the king's like, the fuck you do? Then, like, Max is like, the kid I got to kill is your unborn son. And the king is like, 
just putting his plans out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he's like, I can have you put to death for talking shit about my kid. Then, for no reason, the two priests that are with Max take these grappling hook things, throw them into the ceiling beams, and then hang themselves. <laughs> I did not understand that. that I'm like, what... what the fuck was that? <laughs> well, for a second there, I was like, oh, it's probably so he doesn't tell him about the prophecy. But I was like, he just admitted to what the prophecy is and what his plans The whole were. prophecy's out there. All the plans. So I'm like, what? Why would you just like all... They're two of your followers. They could have helped you fight your way out if that was... But no, apparently he was like, no, I'm going to get like taken. Yeah, I was totally baffled about that. I'm pretty sure I... Not pretty sure. I knew this was, I thought this was cool as a kid. I'm sitting there watching this going, uh, what the, what's going on? <laughs> Yo, the grappling hook wire thing was cool. It was that very fire, cool. Well, cool. You could have came up with a better reason though. Because yeah. the other reason, their reason is nothing. <laughs> like, their reason is nothing. They got, they got a nod from Mayax. Yeah. For no good reason. But like, they got a nod. So they were like, mm, now it's time to hang ourselves. Even if the king was like, I got to know your plans. And Max was like, fuck you. And he's like, well, we'll get it from your priests. And the priests were like, Whoosh, and then hung them. That's that simple. would make sense. <laughs> that would make sense. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> also, can we address the elephant in the room? Uh, who the fuck decided to make Rip Torn's nose look like that? <gasps> you know what too like it was like, something's wrong with his face <laughs> it was probably ripped torn like he's apparently he was a loony bastard um but well, yes like he read this look like i'm a cartoon villain i need a nose like gargamel from the smurfs well no offense to rip torn his nose isn't small as is um, like, as is yeah like, unaugmented his nose is not a teeny tiny like cute little button nose so i was like there i don't understand because Nothing else about his face was different. No. It was just the nose. So I was like, Rip Torn, your nose is already not small. It did not need to be made bigger. Why no. was that the choice? Like, why was that? I, I, I mean, was... We need him to look like a villain. Let's make his nose bigger. Yeah. It feels a little anti-Semitic. And I, I'm not saying that that was the intent from the director or the filmmakers, or the producers, or even Rip Torn himself. I'm just saying it feels hinky. <laughs> uh, so the king arrests Mayax, but let, let's the, the three nightmare looking witches go. Like he lets them go. Yeah. Right. Smart, because that's what you want. You want three witches yeah. with smoking hot bods. Smoking hot bodies. Jacked up faces. Yeah. Just running around. And Max looks at them and winks so openly and blatantly. Like the guard is like, I think that motherfucker is up to some shenanigans. Like the king is like, he's banished. That's enough. We're yeah. good. <laughs> he's like, it's so, okay. We're going to take him out of here. It's cool. It's cool. So, of course, the sexy witch who is horribly disfigured or whatever they are uh, shows yeah. up, cracks open some of that rave glow sticks and pours it on the queen's neck and then on the king's neck and okay like, but can we throw in here she walks into the king and queen's bedroom oh with yeah a fucking farm animal yeah i have that she walks in with a cow <laughs> and i'm like and nobody nobody fucking clued in this woman disfigured face just smoking hot bod half yeah. dressed just walking, walking through the, the castle with a cow <laughs> and nobody fucking clocked that are you hey kidding? why is that witch walking around here with a cow right yeah no and i'll bet having watched this movie in its entirety and it's being 1982 both those actors got some sort of rash from that liquid oh 100 percent. it was probably pre- radioactive they yeah. were pro yeah scratching and had a very horrible yeah. rash afterwards so the- later, i'm sure they were wondering why they got like <laughs> throat cancer yeah so the witch transfers the baby from the queen to the cow not a bad effect actually no the effect was pretty decent for 1982. I was like, I'm not mad at that. No. The reasoning behind transfer, I'm like, why didn't you just cut the baby out? Like, Yeah, they're they're helpless. They can't do anything. They can't do anything. They can't yeah. move. They, She's they, going to die. I don't think they can scream because you think you would yell for the guards by now. Right? So they're yeah. completely immobilized. I'm like, why didn't you just cut the baby out now? Yeah. But no, yeah. she put it in the they, cow. Yeah, the rave juice is already on their neck. But yeah, <laughs> puts it in the cow. Now having the baby inside, leave. They leave. She goes to a field, starts a fire, cuts open the cow. Takes mm-hmm. the now two-year-old child. The kid was huge. <laughs> yeah. 
some farmer walks by and likes, you don't see that every day. And he goes in to take a look, sees the witch from behind and like, uh, hey, good looking. How about a BJ? And then turns around. He screams like a 10 year old girl. Like, ah, take that, you ugly bitch. And runs her through. Actually, she flips his sword up and he catches it and then just yeah. stabs well, him. <laughs> stabs he, her. She brands a piece of, I think, leather. Yes. And then she brands the baby on the palm of his hand. On the palm of his hand, yeah. And with apparently the royal symbol. Which was a very shitty symbol, by the way. Right? It like was so anyone shitty. could have made that symbol. <laughs> it, it looked like an incomplete capital A or a really shitty capital H. Like it was yeah. just, it was terrible. Anyway, so she does. And then she's about to, I'm assuming, kill the baby. Mm-hmm. We don't know because we can't see anything other than her lifting the knife. Yeah. And we're looking at her from behind. So I was like, I can't even see what she's aiming at. Yeah. Is she going to hit the leather? Is she going to hit the baby? Like what's, why, why did she like brand the leather? I don't understand. And then that's when Farmer John apparently decides I'm going to bust her ass up. Yeah. And I love the, and most of these effects, if you're looking to film anything, you can watch this movie and you can do all these effects for like no money. Oh, a hundred percent. And it's not hard to figure out how they did it. No. <laughs> you, nope. you pretty much can guess how they did it. And she cackles and laughs. And I thought she was coming back, but we never see this one again. No, apparently she's gone, gone when she gets yeah. thrown into the fire. Yeah. And just cackles. And that's her last words. She cackles. Yeah. I think they all do when they die in this movie. So the, the farmer takes a child home. The whole town. Wait. He gets to it. Oh, this. He gets to a hill and looks down on his village. And mm-hmm. it it looks like he is either standing beside a miniature or a painting. Either is equally horrible and awesome <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> I also had questions about the village. Because it looked almost like a miniature. And they're like, no, no, just stand beside yeah. it. I'll shoot the camera so it makes it look like it's far it's about away. about perspective. Yeah. And it's it did not accomplish that at all. <laughs> no. No, Looks like he could just step on it like Godzilla. Uh, okay, and then he takes the baby in, and he's like, look what I got, and holds the baby up. And it names it Dar. The child yes. learns how to fight and develops his ability to telepathically communicate with animals. So as a kid, Dar, now played by our friend Billy Jacoby from just one of the guys, and arguably one of the best things of that movie, mm-hmm. uh, he changed his name to Billy Jane. Yeah. Not a great change. What are you going to do? Billy Jane, not my lover. Uh, so in an odd one of many scenes, uh, Dar's dad, uh, I, I, I say Dar's dad because I couldn't remember his name. So I went to look it up on IMDb and it just says Dar's father. <laughs> so um, I don't think his character had an actual name, name. No, no. And then one day he's training and w- one farmer is, I guess, farming miles from home. And the dad throws the, it's, he calls it a caber which is actually a weapon called a, a glaive. I oh. looked that up. Don't don't pat me on the back. I totally looked it up. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, hey, Frank. Frank turns around and Dar's dad whips that fucking thing, takes off his hat and, and goes and pins it to a tree. And the farmer's like, you crazy bastard. And Dar and dad laugh. The guy goes to pull it off the tree and he's sucked right into the bush. Uh, yeah. That was actually not a, one of the better effects because it looked pretty cool. That I liked, but also, can we talk about the laughter that Dar and his dad did? Oh, when and how terrible it was when he uh, almost yeah. felt, yeah, yeah. Now, I don't. It almost sounded like they added the laughter after. Maybe, but it was a lot of ha 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 ha. It was, and I was like, horrible. <laughs> oh God, it was terrible, guys. I'm trying to many times. I'm like, what the fuck did you spend nine million dollars? <laughs> <laughs> this is nine million dollars in nineteen eighty two. That's like a hundred million dollars today. You wow. know why? I don't know what that it is, but they they had to go on location, right? So yeah. then they're they also had a little bit of studio time because I'm pretty sure that scene with the bush where he gets pulled in. I'm like, I'm pretty sure that's a set because that bush seems very full. I'm like, yeah. that doesn't happen in nature, but a lot of it takes place out in like the desert or out in plains. Yes. So I was like, y'all went somewhere kind of, you know, and you had to put up everybody in the crew and the cast, everybody. So that's probably where half the money went. Yeah. The feed probably. And like for room and board for the cast and crew. 
because there is no way it went to effects. There is no way it went to a story editor. There Mm -mm. is no way it went to an editor. (laughs) No. No. There wasn't anybody doing continuity either. Nope. They scrapped that role. Uh, This grizzly comes out and we get to see Dar mentally talk to the bear. The bear Mm -hmm. takes off and Dar's dad is like, don't tell anybody about this. He doesn't say why. Maybe they call him names at school or want him for every birthday party. But the dialogue, and a lot of the times the dialogue went, like, when the next morning when Dar goes out to farm and he yeah. pauses it and Dad is like, Dar, and they pause, and then they wave, and then Dar's like, Dad, and they pause, and then Dar laughs and waves, and his dad didn't say anything funny. No. Dad didn't say shit, and I'm like, who the fuck wrote this? I was waiting for words. Also, because there's a, a time jump between the this is your gift. Don't tell anyone about yes. it. And then all of a sudden, Dar's an adult. Yeah. And apparently going out to the farm yep. to like farm stuff. Farm dirt by the looks of it. And Yeah, no <laughs> shit, right? I'm like, like there's guys, nothing there. This is, uh, this is just bad, hoeing okay. the dirt. Yeah, pretty much. So <laughs> when they had that conversa- conversation, um, I was like, is that all you're going to give me? This does not tell me that they have a super close relationship. This does not tell me that they love each other. This does not tell me that they hate each other. I don't know anything other than they can say bye. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's it. Not e- They didn't even say the word bye. It was just like, dar, father, done. Everybody walks away. <laughs> and everyone walks away. <laughs> uh, years later, a fully grown dar witnesses people being slaughtered by the, is it the Huns? Huns? Juns? I, I always thought Juns? it started with the Juns, the Jun horde. Yeah, okay. A fanatic yeah. barbarian allied with Mayax. Um, okay, so yeah, he goes farm. This is one of the 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 great battle scenes of the movie. <laughs> from the amazing smoke or dust coming in from the north, signifying the horde is riding towards yes. the village. I yes. don't know if that was animation or what that was, but realism would it not be in its description no. um to the extras who it didn't matter if they were being sexually assaulted or massacred during this uh, battle scene some of them looked like they were having a great time <laughs> not being massacred or sexually assaulted let me clear that up they looked like they had no experience in movies yeah. and they were having a blast <laughs> those, knowing that those were they were not in a actors. movie those no. are not actors who do extra work no. in between gigs. <sighs> like those, those were people who were like, oh, like they put up a sign at a community center and they were like, come be massacred. <laughs> and everybody was like, okay, sounds like a good time. Cool. Um, one thing I had a problem with this entire fight scene, everybody was doing lots of stabby stabby and cutting cutting and that's fine. But every sword was clean. Yeah. Clean. And you there saw was no blood, no blood anywhere. None. people's shirts stayed intact there were no cuts i was like what guys give me something like just which a begs bit the of question blood. the fuck did your nine million dollars go <laughs> <laughs> not to make up well actually no they spent all the money for makeup on the three witches yeah and ripped horn's nose that's it yeah because when they, the horde first gets there i love like all the old men just picking up their swords and their back hose and <sighs> And I love the old men were just as scantily dressed as the women, maybe even more so. They were old. They yeah. didn't give a fuck. There are no pants. <laughs> there are no pants. No, these I don't think anyone wore pants in this movie. Probably not, actually. Maybe the Horde does. And as this, yeah, maybe the Horde does, actually, yes. Yeah, and as this battle goes on, I loved, loved for no reason that these straw huts just started to explode. Right, like they were hit with missiles, just explosion <laughs> after explode. Like it looked cool. Don't get me wrong, but yeah. I'm like, how the fuck are they exploding? Also, because all of these huts were on stilts. Oh, they my so fake. first thought, I'm like, because in the beginning, when Dar is about to go farming, he slides down. Slides a rope down. From it the almost looks like a, about to fall over. Yeah, and I was like, why is there not a ladder or stairs? Yeah. Okay. Because there weren't like it was just I was like, do you climb the rope to get home? What? What do the old people do after hard day's work? Right. (laughs) And then on top of that, they're on such high stilts. I was like, is there flooding? Like, why? 
I, yeah. It's not like 10 feet. These are literally no, like 30 it, feet in the air, 40 feet in the it air. It was, was high. Like, <laughs> I was like, what? So then everything goes on fire. I was like, okay, fire makes sense. Yeah. It's all made of wood. Cool. Then all of a sudden the rip fire starts raging. And I was like, I I don't think they have that many flammables. Then everything starts exploding. Just exploding. And off. I was like, okay, they don't have like a gas stove. No. They don't have gas lines. I highly doubt they have gunpowder just sitting around in vast quantities in each. Of I was like, what the fuck is exploding? <laughs> but now we know where the $9 million went. Yeah. He's like, I'm going to fucking explode some shit. And they're like, this is like set in like mythical times. I don't care. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I was sitting there with a smile on my face saying to nobody, like, how the fuck are these things exploding? <laughs> I, was I like, loved oh, explosions look good. <laughs> yeah. I love Dar's dog trying to pull him. And like it was so obvious he was being pulled by someone or something. Yeah. And then the there dog was... got an arrow to the gut. <laughs> Didn't that stop him. Me. No, but I yeah. said, I was like, if that motherfucking dog dies, we got problems. Like I'm yeah. I'm gonna fight you. Well, he does die. But I he know. drags Dar like 10 miles away. Like that dog right. really got him out of there. <laughs> yeah. He worked hard. Yeah, Dar, the only survivor of the attack, journeys to Arak to avenge his people. Arak to avenge his people. First, Dar collected all the village people, his village people, and put them in a pile. The last mm-hmm. was his dog. That was not a dummy dog. They either killed that dog or drugged it. Actually, they drugged it. If there was a couple scenes where you see the dog's chest just heaving, breathing. Yeah. In time, Dar is joined by a golden eagle he named Sharak. A pair of thieving ferrets he names Kodo and Podo, and a black tire he names Ru 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 Ru. Sure. Ru. Uh, first, those two little ferrets steal his pouch. A long chase ensues. Mm. Dar falls into quicksand and then talks to the ferrets, and they chew through a branch that falls down to help him get out. Dar gets out, ferret goes in. Yeah, And as the ferret goes fully into the quicksand, I'm sitting there wondering, like, how many ferrets did they go through during the shoot? (laughs) (laughs) This is not the last time I have this question about the ferrets. No, they're the ferrets get into everything. (laughs) Yeah. And yeah, I I have a I'm I'm guessing that. Yeah, there are more than one did not make it out of this movie. Um, Then he's in the desert on top of a giant rock with a log swinging around and what i can only say is a transition from village boy to beastmaster Um, sure i was like why is he swinging the log (laughs) i had no idea i'm so Uh, confused he has the sword why is he swinging the log yeah it wasn't like he didn't have the sword yet he had a sword he takes his father's sword so i was like dude and then he starts walking keeps walking manages to go up a mountain slash hill rock formation whatever you want to call it and then just starts swinging a log swinging a log But later, he's on top of another rock, swinging his sword. Like, this fucker ends up on a lot of rocks, just swinging his sword around. He really likes climbing. Yeah. I begin to think Dar can't really communicate with animals. He's on the spectrum. He just (laughs) thinks he can communicate with animals. And he just likes climbing rocks and swinging that fucking sword around. (laughs) Uh, Also... He sees the tiger being hunted. He helps out the tiger. Yes. And the tiger just hangs around Dar in case it can't find food. And he'll just eat Dar and the ferrets. Now, I did make a comment. I'm like, wait a minute. I'm watching this. I'm like, I don't think there's such thing as black fucking tigers. There is. I Googled it. Ah, but they didn't use black tigers in this movie. No. I think they just put shoe polish on a tiger. No, they um, use Lady Cl- Clarol. Lady Clarol. Oh my they had, god! They use yeah. like an at-home like hair color kit. Yeah, because and they said because it was the safest way to do it. Yeah, but the only problem is is that whenever the tiger got wet or drank, yeah, it came off, and you could see which is why where, yeah the tiger had like a <laughs> big white spot on the. I was like super cute tiger, but here's the because I, I googled. I was like, is there such a thing as black tigers? So I googled it. There are black tigers. Oh, okay. Um, but not like that. What oh, happens yeah, no. is their stripes become thicker and darker. That's right. Yes. Yeah. So it's almost like they're all black, but they're but not. They do, There's a they lot more. They still have like, a lot white saw, and orange yeah. in it. Yeah. Yeah. Their so stripes I, I are a lot like, bigger. Your real black tigers are super cute. Yeah. Not planning on hugging one. Don't worry. I'm not that kind of white woman. 
But I mean, I was like, this kind of black tiger is not a thing, but it's good to know that they went with the home hair care box color. Yes. And I, he just ran mm-hmm. around with the tiger and it was 1982 because that fucker would have been CGI'd if I was in it. Now, Dar meets a slave girl named Kira. Is it Kira? Kira. Yeah, he does. <laughs> and yes, ladies and gentlemen, he meets Tanya Roberts, Kira, boobs and all. Yep. Being bathed by another woman mm. and her boobs under yep. a waterfall. It was a magical scene. So innocent and full of wonder. Want to hear something funny? When I first saw Tanya Roberts' boobs, my first thought was, Jimmy got his boobs. Got Tanya Roberts' boobs. And I was surprised. Like It's PG. I was not expecting boobies. No. Yeah, boobies. There yeah. were boobies, my friends. Yeah. Uh, then Dar, that rascal, has Podo and Dodo, whatever, the ferrets, steal their clothing while mm. he... I don't know, touches himself behind him. I don't know. He seemed pretty pleased with himself. <laughs> a strange but unlikely turn in, in, in the movie. Um, yeah. And then we get to see Kira's boobies a bit here and a bit there. Then the tiger is just uh, sitting there. Like she sees the tiger and the tiger's like, what's up? And Dar is like, don't move. We must distract the beast or he'll eat us. Okay. Can I tell you? I think he was having a conversation with the tiger and being like, look ferocious. And he was literally <laughs> pulling. Because have you heard of this? pickup setup no we're like one of your friends if you're a guy guys you have done this one of the guy the guy who wants to do the pickup right he sends his friend over to be a, an ass oh okay yeah, yeah and then he goes in and, and rescues i don't know the official name of it i know it has a like that little <laughs> game has a name but when this team came up i was like oh god he just turned into a sleazy pickup artist yeah. While right after his entire village, including his father and his dog, got slaughtered, he's on a mission for revenge, and he's all like, "I'm gonna be that slimy pickup guy." Yeah, I was like, yeah. "What?" He's the lust master. <laughs> he's the sleaze master. That's what he is. Sleaze master. That's actually better. Yeah. Side note: We don't know what happened to the other slave girls. Mm. This is it's another running theme. <laughs> Because, right, Kira is a slave girl, which makes her hotter. Yeah. yeah. The imagination is amazing and wonderful thing. Also, um, we all know how slave masters let their slaves just run around unattended. Yeah. And just, waterfalls in the and middle of the And waterfalls and go for a little swim in the middle of the day, you know. <laughs> yeah. Of course, because slaves have but, so much freedom. Because Dar is like, hey, come with me. And she's like, I can't. If I don't go back, they're going to kill my family. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, it don't matter. I'll be your family. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, she says something like, I'm a slave girl, and when yeah. the half moon hits and the stars, I don't know. It's really stupid. I just look at her heaving <laughs> bosoms. So this is how Wikipedia handles this encounter. Dar meets slave girl Kira before getting himself lost and ended up surrounded by eerie half-bird, half-human race. <laughs> so, Can we talk about that? Just, well, yeah, we'll, we're right. So before that, Dar goes to the city where we watch yeah. old Gargamel. Throwing fucking children into a pit. <laughs> right. <laughs> As sacrifices. And if you're listening to this going, really? Yeah. He tosses a couple of them in the fire. Literally tosses. Yeah. Just One, he lets slide down and she kind of stops yeah. herself. So he grabs a stick and starts fucking poking, poking her. her. Like, get in there, you little bastard. <laughs> like it's a clogged toilet. But Dar calls his eagle, who swoops down and grabs the child and flies off with it. And yeah. let me tell you, it looks... As good as an eagle grabbing a 10-year-old kid from a temple fire and flying off the distance in 1982 on a set with no real concept of special effects, as it sounds. <laughs> it was horrible. Can I tell you, when they did that cutaway shot to the eagle with the kid <laughs> flying in the sky, I was like, who did that? <laughs> Please tell me they were fired. Because if someone said, yes, that looks great. I'm like, you didn't even have to show that. Yeah. You could have sh- just shown, you know, like... The eagle claws, maybe a close up of the kid, throw some sky in the back, sure. Yeah. But I was like, you don't, why? why? You can't see anything. It literally looks like the eagle is, or the hawk is, is holding a flag. Yeah. That's what it looks like. So yeah. Dar, Dar shows up at the house of the family who had their kid grabbed by an eagle and returns the kid. 
the father is grateful and says he's indebted to him for life. Anything you need, I'm there for you. What's mine is yours. And then continues to complain every time Dar asks him for help. <laughs> <laughs> then Dar asks about Kira, the slave girl. The guy explains the sacrificing of the children, the horde, the king trapped in the temple. And Dharma's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What about the slave girl? Like he has no interest in anything else. So this guy is like, they'll be leaving and traveling to a mountain pass and then to a river. Just so you know, listeners, this is the most blatant way this movie manipulates the story just to have an action set come about. Like there's no apps. Once you get past this next scene, these next couple of scenes, there's no reason for these slave girls to be going anywhere. Correct. Like they're supposed to be sacrificed at the fucking temple. I don't yeah. know if they're just going on a little vacation or a little stroll. <laughs> Who knows? Because nobody told us. No. Okay, so back to Wikipedia. As the birdmen worship eagles, they spare Dar when he summons Sharak and gives him an amulet. I remember the scene being so cool as a kid. Dar sees the cauldron and it yeah. checks it out. And it's full of human body parts. The guy's up in a tree, hanging from a tree in a little cage. Dar lets him out. Mm-hmm. Then he runs into one of these hawk men and it just oozes that stuff on the ground and yeah. opens up and lets the ball. The set piece here looked really good. Like the colder in the cage hanging from the tree. I don't get that. There's such inconsistency of quality in this movie. There is, but this one felt, this one felt like a set. You know what I mean? Like oh, it was like, you know, absolutely. It, it felt like a theater set. Yeah. And I wasn't necessarily mad at that. However, what I was mad at the was Hawkman. the Hawkman. <laughs> yeah. I said the cauldron and the cage and the tree, and that looked all cool. I didn't say anything yeah. about the Hawkman. No, that's a whole, but I was like, this feels very much, oh God, which is it Hamlet that has the three witches? I think so. Yeah, I think so too. Or was it Macbeth? Oh, it might be in Macbeth. You see how long it's been since I fucking read Shakespeare? I should get on that. Anyways, it felt like three witches were going to show up and boil, double, double, boil in trouble. God, somebody tell me if I got that right. Macbeth. 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 Thank you. I was like, Hamlet, or, like, it's somebody who's a king. Um, but anyways, yeah, it felt like that. I, I was like, I was expecting Shakespearean things to happen. They did not happen. No. The hawk people <laughs> happened. Yeah. The giant, we look kind of like bats, but without any sort of nostrils or mouths or really ears or anything other than eyes that looks super human. Oh, you could tell they were a mask. Like it was. Yeah. So it was, I was like, what? And then he wraps the guy, basically dissolves the guy in his wings. I was like, also super weird. And then I couldn't decide because from some shots, these bird men look like they're 10 feet tall. And from some of them, they look average height. So I was like, which one is it? Yeah. Are they scary tall or not so much? And that is a question that will persist for the eons because we still don't know. No, I'll admit that they looked a lot cooler when I was 10. Mm. (laughs) Because when you go in a close up, like it's so like even the horde had black makeup around their eye to kind of blend in with their black masks. Yeah, these, these guys, guys did not. No, you. Could it was tell just it straight like, here's human eyes, and I was like, that's jarring. And Dar calls his eagle, who squawks at them, and they give him an amulet, which does come in handy later. Yes, this is probably the only thing that resembled continuity mm-hmm. in this entire movie. Yes, completely okay. useless, but it was con- continuous. Yeah. Dar soon arrives at a rock where May- Mayax had assumed total control with the Jun support. Mayax has taken, also, I got ahead of myself, taken the children of the townspeople and has sacrificed them to his god, R. A R. After having Sharag save the child of the townsman named Sako, Dar learns that Kira is to be sacrificed. On his way to save her, Dar is joined by Zed's younger son, Tal. Zed is the king. Mm. Tal is his son, which makes him half brother to Dar and his bodyguard Seth. So the tiger is helping Beastmaster. Actually, the tiger is, tiger is actually doing all the work, and the Beastmaster is just watching through the tiger's eyes when they Correct. 
those priests are out to kill him. Seth and Tal help the tiger who gets trapped and just about shot with an arrow. Seth really just pushes him into the pit with the tiger and the tiger does the rest. Mm -hmm. Then they help Beastmaster get the tiger out. Then they sit around and talk and Tal plays with the ferrets and Beastmaster shows them all the shit they stole, including the ring with the one the priest had that opens up yeah. revealing the eye. That actually didn't look that bad. No, like, it that did look pretty creepy. Cool. I give I give them points for that one because that one I was like, oh, that's pretty good. He gives him the ring with the eye, uh, like the one on the poster. Dar mm -hmm. gives it to Tal. So through the entire movie, Mayak sees and I'm guessing hears everything. It would have been funny if you could only see and couldn't hear nothing. Yeah. Gets all pissy. Then Seth sees a piece of jewelry that belongs to Kira. And he's like, well, this is this is where Wikipedia mentions and learns that Kira is Zed's niece. So that's right, listeners. That would make Kira Dar's first cousin. Spoiler alert, Dar don't give a fuck. <laughs> and let's, let's be honest, I wouldn't either. It's okay, Kira don't care neither. <laughs> no. Yeah, my cousins are lucky they never look like Tanya Roberts. <laughs> oh, God. Ew. They'd be, they'd, be, they'd be dreading family reunions even more than usual. <laughs> that is so gross. Oh... Uh... <laughs> I would argue John Amos uh, Seth is probably the most scantily clad dressed mm. character in this entire movie. Uh, they do enjoy showing his body a lot. Yeah. And I am not mad at that because a young John Amos. Hey, man, how you doing? He yeah. If you have a hankering for a little more John Amos, this is the movie for you. <laughs> Honestly, if you're like young John Amos, there you go right here. Yeah. And Perfect. he's always wearing a loincloth. His legs, his butt, his chest, always showing. Everything just, yeah, always showing. Just, just all out there. So, I mean, if that's if that's your jam, then this is the movie for you. <laughs> <laughs> also, he's the only one that seems to be, like, a good actor in this. Yeah, because Rip Torn seems to be having a, a good time. Oh, he's having a great time. I think but Mark he's... Singer is trying. Yeah, Mark Singer is trying, but he doesn't have much to work with. I don't think... Tanya Roberts, I really wouldn't consider her a great dramatic actor. No. 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 I mean, she wasn't super terrible. Also, she did not no. have a lot to work with. No. Uh, no. no. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, I feel kind of bad for everybody in this movie because I'm like, I can't tell how much of this is just you being a shitty actor and how much is the <laughs> writing and how much is the directing. <laughs> this yeah. is terrible. Yeah. Well, the three work to save her. Okay, so five oh slave girls leave the temple where they are going to be sacrificed, and then they go to this mountain pass into this river. The slave girls and priests wait for the ferry crossing. Dar, Tala, who is really Dar's half-brother, and Seth are in disguise and working the ferry. They oh. reveal themselves and attack the priest. The tiger shows up again to help. Dar embraces Kira again and says, don't move. <laughs> It does his whole shtick again. While yeah. I might add, doing the shtick as Tal, the kid, almost is killed, and yeah. Seth is doing most of the work. Yep. Ah, oh, that beast master. Sleaze master. Yeah. Some might say he's a one track mind. He's a rascal. <laughs> now they beat the priests. They are starting to cross the river again, and more priests show up. And I'm like, where are the other slave girls? Like there were five of them, and I thought I thought I missed something and rewound it, and no, they just. It just disappear. disappeared. Yeah, they're gone. And I don't even know why these new priests showed up. And they, they're they introduced by an arrow hitting the dragon totem on the boat, the yeah. raft. Cool. There are five or so of these new priests carrying crossbows, and they all fire at Beastmaster and Cat Company. And I might also add, they are not that far out into the water, and they keep hitting the same fucking totem. Yes, correct. Like, that was the only thing they were aiming at. Like, they could have used sound effects like whizzing sounds and moved yeah, their no. heads out of the way of moving out imaginary arrows. Also, they weren't that far away. So I'm no. like, well, all of the archers are really shit. <laughs> yeah. And then I think they were trying to pull up the anchor, whatever was on that big rope. Yeah. Um, that they were trying to pull up that apparently nobody could, could do. And for some reason, they just let all of the, the priests shoot all of these arrows at them yep not cut the rope because they yeah. were like just no we're gonna keep trying to pull it up like morons and i was like okay so they finally cut the rope they cheer yeah they're still in the same spot yeah it's like ah they can't shoot we're shit 
like because they're not anchored anymore all of a sudden they're immune to arrows and i was like who sat well, there and said this makes sense i think it was one of those fairies where it's connected one end to the other and you use the rope to pull the thing across I but i never too. saw the other there was no other side, side. And there, there was, was no, no rope. rope going out the other side. I thought it was like that, so, too. I was like, oh, it's probably one of those fairies where you pull on the rope and it pulls the fairy along. I thought that. And then I was but, like, it's not tied to anything on the other side. No, there's no end to it. There's so not even a rope like, going oh. out. Yeah. So I was like, oh, that rope must be the anchor because that would make sense. So that's where my mind went because I was like, that there must be a reason why they're fighting with this rope. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know either. I was like, uh, I've decided it's the anchor. That's what I've decided. Yeah. Okay. While Seth gathers their forces, Dar helps Kira and Tal infiltrate the temple and rescue King Zed. That's right. They go right back to the place they left. Seth yeah. is like, see you in two days. Beastmaster is like, you think he can find warriors? And Tal is like, if anyone can, Seth can. And I'm like, how the f it took you fuckers to get the entire day? To get yep. down the river. Yep. What are you gonna post it on Facebook? <laughs> sign up, sign up for Zip Recruiter. Zip Recruiter, because finding great candidates for your labor force <laughs> can be like finding a needle in a haystack. Sure, you can post your job to some job board and hope the right person comes along, or you can use Zip Recruiter, the beast master of employee job search. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, I almost got through it. <sighs> so they rescue King Zed. How? First, they sneak into the temple. Now, listeners, I'm guessing you're like, but Jimmy, that seems like it's going to be really hard. No. Nope. Uh, bar barely an inconvenience. First, they hide in... This was this was awesome. They hide in Dar's buddy's wagon full of hay. Yes. Uh, his buddy whose daughter he saved from earlier. And again, he did not want to help them, but he did. Unfortunately, Max can see them in the hay because Tal is wearing the ring. How can he see them? You'd think the ring would only see the hay. But he sees them all clear as day sitting underneath this hay. <laughs> Even the tiger. Correct. <sighs> now they are through the gate. Kira and her sexy boobies uh, was a slave girl. So she knows all the hidden doors and secret passages, apparently. Of course. First, they come into this hall with like jail, jail cell doors at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And you see, you start to see some green eyes. And as the Beastmaster walks down the hall, these hands with spiked gloves come out of the cell bar, and they're trying to grab him, and they're they're growling. Yeah. Kira knew how to get in, but forgot all about these fucking monsters in the cell. <laughs> no problem. Beastmaster jumps uh, up to some conveniently hanging chains and, and shimmies his way right down the hall. As you and, do. yeah, the monster's arms retract, and they stop growling. So Tal and Kara are like, Cool, I guess it's safe now. And they start walking. He's like, Whoa. Like, thank God the Beastmaster had some sense. And he's like, Are you stupid? Stop. Then he goes and starts turning some lever. Mm. And I'm like, How the fuck do you know that just doesn't open the cells? Like, you've never been here before. <laughs> this movie is so oh god. There is <sighs> no logic. This is a logic black hole. Oh, my God. Yeah. Luckily, though, it shut the shutter things over the cell, so they yeah. were safe to walk across. They come to a hole in the floor, and they see some uh, priests below and are like, we need those keys to use to get the king out. So we use Frodo and Samwise Gamgee, the ferrets here, to steal them. I'm guessing they're master keys. Mm. Now, this was a stupid scene, of course, but it was humorous. One of the ones that actually were purposely humorous, as they were lowering the, the ferrets, Tal is explaining what the priests are doing. They are taking dudes, strapping them in some dominatrix outfit, putting a slug in their ear, and turns them into these mindless monsters who will stop at nothing to spank your bottom and burn your feet. Um, they don't even listen to your safe word. But as the <laughs> but as the priest is putting the slug injector down, he turns and comes face to face with the ferret, <laughs> and he just screams, and the ferrets kind of squeal. That was actually pretty funny. Yeah. Dar drops them. The priest is trying to get the ferrets. The other priest is doing something and suddenly comes face to face with the mindless monster. He mm -hmm. turns to his buddy and he's like, hey, Bill, you had one fucking job just before <laughs> the thing kills him. <laughs> then he chases the other priest around a while, kills him, and then the green-eyed monster starts chasing the ferrets. Okay, can we talk about how he chases the ferrets? 
Yeah. The grenade monster. <laughs> of course we can. Because him running down the hall and him flailing his arms like he's a Muppet is the greatest. All I oh could my see God. in my head was Grover near far. It was. I could just see the first. He's just kind of running and ah, and they're like, no, 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 flail your more, more, more flail. You've got to look like you're 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 trying to fight something. And yeah. he was like, okay, and he's just flailing his arms all over the place. And you're like, sir, you look stupid. Stop. <laughs> oh yeah, laughed at that part. Yep. Oh yeah, that was good because he does it throughout this part of the movie. Uh, Every time you see him running, just whoa. Yeah. And then <laughs> Kira's like this way, and Beastmaster is like, finally, we're going to do it. And she's like, I found the king. And he's like, ah, oh, nuts. They do find the king. I'm trying to remember because so much goes on and nothing really happens. But yeah. they find the king in a cell, and yeah. Dar's like, we need those keys. And Kira's like, it's unlocked. <laughs> like, that's not a red flag. <laughs> Oh, I can't stay mad at you, Tanya Roberts. They <laughs> they go in and the door closes and it's Gargamel, Mayax, and there and it's like, ha I got you, Beastmaster. Meanwhile, the Dominatrix is still chasing the ferrets who are running under doors. They're running mm -hmm. through plumbing. Yeah, like, they're actual they're plumbing. The place, yeah. Yeah. Uh, which I don't know why or how they had plumbing, but whatever. Don't ask questions you don't need. No. You can't find the answer to because there no. are no answers. No, I, you think someone would be like, you know what we could use plumbing for? Like water or bathroom waste. And they'd be like, shut up, Frank. Put more nipple clamps on those <laughs> dominatrix monsters. Uh, and then I swear they were like, how do we get Mayax and the witch into a conflict with the Beastmaster after they got them trapped in a cell? And like a gaffer or something is like, have the tiger come around the corner and scare them in. Pretty much. Yeah, the continuity guy is like, that's stupid. And the director is like, that's brilliant. <laughs> So the tiger, who was not with them after the mm -hmm. gates, navigates right. himself through the hidden passages and corridors yep. and then chases Mayax and the witch into the cell with the Beastmaster. Uh, oh, yeah. The king is blind when they find yeah, the king. He yeah. has no eyes. No eyes. Not just blind. He has no not eyes. Just, he has. They took his eyes out. Yeah. Bastards. That was jarring. I yeah. was like, oh, they like scoop those motherfuckers out. And then Mayax is in there and he blows something in the Beastmaster's eyes and Kira tries to kill Mayax, but he grabs the kid who is just really useless. Yeah. Uh, the witch is climbing on the wall and the ceiling and attempt to get a drop on Beastmaster, but he sees her through the eyes of the tiger who's mm -hmm. at the door just looking. <laughs> and he uh, runs her through with a sword. And how does Mayax get away? I don't remember. Because all of a sudden he wasn't there. Yeah. Like Kira throws something and knocks a dagger out of his hand and he just he runs away and then the, the the tiger comes through the door and he jumps down and then he's gone. Yeah. And they don't even check. <laughs> no. They okay. just walk away. Yeah. Now they go to a room with a staircase that goes down, but there's a skull boulder blocking it. Kira turns a lever with ease, I might add, and the mm -hmm. boulder's lifted up. She knew that, but she didn't know the hallway of Dominatrix monsters. Beastmaster is like, you go, I'll hold them off. Then he tries to push the lever the other way. And he can't budge it. I'm like, bitch, master. <laughs> then he chops off a faucet. I don't know why or how he thought this would work, but it does. The, the thing goes over the staircase again, and they're protected. The priest guys are banging at the door. The ferrets have led the dominatrix monster right to them, and yes. he spanks the shit out of them. Um. Some are screaming safe words like the pineapple is hurting or this, <laughs> this banana doesn't split. Marshmallow. Or, yeah, marshmallow. Stop. I don't like it. <laughs> doesn't work. Then red, from behind. Red. Yeah. <laughs> then from then from behind the boulder, Kira just appears back. Mm -hmm. I'm like, the fuck you come from? Beastmaster doesn't even seem to be phased by it. Like, uh, are you kidding? You saw her go down the stairs. It's covered with the, and she just appears. Grab some rope. Rope, might I add, that was not there before. And it's perfectly coiled. Of course. I'm like, oh, my God. Wow. <laughs> awesome. Uh, she's like, let's go out the air vent. I'm like, air vent? The fuck is going on? <laughs> they go up. The monster is right behind them. 
Mm -hmm. Then he gets stuck, gets a phone call or something. Uh, (laughs) Because they have enough time to tie the rope and start their descent. Of course, yeah. But there is the the monster, and he starts smacking Mm -hmm. the rope, which have those stud things on it. So it's cutting the rope. Then they fall right into the back of his buddy's horse and wagon that's filled with hay. The, oh, but before the before the rope breaks, it was a hawk, I think, who went and like pecked at his head or pulled his head down. That's and then right. He, he, fell, he fell out of out. the window. That's right. Yeah. And then and then it snapped. apparently died. And then Beastmaster's like, "Go down, go down." And Tanya Roberts did not move fast enough. No. Neither did Beastmaster. So no. they fell from basically they were only ten feet from the window. So yeah, in there, and then they fell into the rickety like thing the hay thing and then that was it. that was they moving it wasn't just yeah. sitting there it, it was wasn't just moving. sitting there it was moving so my first question was like how did that survive two grown-ass people yeah falling into it because it is rickety as fuck and i was like yeah. this is not like a sturdy wagon and i didn't see no kid in that wagon i didn't see no king i definitely didn't see the tiger nope no. Yeah, then the, they say the gate is closed. And no problem. Dar takes out his ferrets and is like, get up there, you little bastards, and nibble those ropes. I'm not sure that's how gates pulley systems work. Like it when they're not. closed, <laughs> you just not. cut a rope and open. Nope. I'm sitting there going, what the? F- ah. But whatever. Cheech and Chong, the ferrets, they go and start nibbling. Now they have a bunch of these dominatrix monsters coming towards them mm. as they're waiting for the gate. The guard sees the ferret and grabs one who doesn't stop nibbling. That is that's dedication, right there. Right there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And just as the guard's about to slice him, the other ferret sees him and jumps and bites his nuts. That was pretty funny. Yeah, he screams, falls, cuts the rope as one would. Gate opens. They get through. They cut the rope again. The gate yeah. closes. <laughs> yep. Uh, again, I stress, I do not believe this is how gates operate, even in the olden <laughs> days. But they crushed the dominatrix monsters perfectly. All three of them tried to walk through at the exact same time. Correct. And now it looks like we are back to Wikipedia. An obstinate Zed leads his forces to attack the city. Okay. Actually, they all meet Seth, who has gathered quite a few warriors. Shout out to mm-hmm. ZipRecruiter. Uh, <laughs> he's like, we are going to attack from here. Seth is going to attack from there. And Beastmaster is like, no, you must concentrate on the horde. And the king is like, who asked you, you freak? Get out of here. And then Seth sees the ring with the eye and pokes it with a stick. That was cool, too. Yeah, that was actually pretty cool. And he's like, my king, Mayax definitely knows our plan. The king's like, fuck it. <laughs> we're we're gonna, gonna do it, do it anyway. It. Yeah. Uh, I feel like there's a reason why that king was able to be held for so long. Yeah, like you didn't fight to get out. You were just no. like, mm, it's kind of nice. I get three squares a day. I'm good. Yeah, yeah, he's fine. There was nothing about his plan that he. This was the writing that yeah. he would. The king was just going to attack. Yeah, he was like, we're going to take 15 people straight at the gate. We're just going to go in. Yeah, we're just gonna, and it's gonna work. Uh, and it's then gonna we cut. Work. Yeah, then we cut to Dar, who is like crying. Bitch oh, master, oh, indeed. Man. Then Kira appears out of nowhere again, and he's like, "You want to come with me now?" And she's like, "I can. I must stand by the king." Despite the prudent warnings of Dar, who leaves the group in anger. Well, he didn't leave in anger; he was embarrassed he and told cause, to go. Cause, yeah, because when Kira says, "No, I have to stay," he's like, "Okay, then I guess I'm staying with you." But then mm. she doesn't stay with him. <laughs> No. She's all like, okay, you stay over here. I'm going to go back where the fires are, where it's like warm and shit. Um, yeah. See you in the morning. Yep. Now they are all easily t- defeated and captured, and Dar decides to return to save them from being sacrificed. How? You guessed it. Goes right back to the fucking temple. <laughs> they wheel Seth and Kira and Tal into the most flimsiest wagon I have ever seen. Mm-hmm. Beastmaster's friend, the coward, is like their plan didn't work and now they're going to be sacrificed. Of course they are. I can't believe I watched this as a kid and was just riveted. (laughs) (laughs) I think I'm on the spectrum. (laughs) Oh, Oh, man. No, I'm telling you right now, autistic kids would not put up with this movie. Oh, no, they would have left 10 minutes into the stupid movie. (laughs) 
in the conflict that follows, Max reveals Dar's relationship to Zed before slitting Zed's throat and facing the Beastmaster. I don't think you actually see him cut his throat. He did not slice his throat. No. He took he, the knife down to his belly. Yeah. And, and sliced him. there. Yeah. I was like, and that's right. Cause I thought, oh, th- th- we're going to have um, a heart to heart with yeah. dad. And, and then all of a sudden, Zed just dies. And Zed I was like, <laughs> you're not even going to have like a my son moment. I'm so sorry, my son. I nope. didn't know. No. Nope. You've grown to be a fine man. Something. Give me something. Nah. Slice dead. Yep. What? And before that, we had some of the most amazing choreographed sword fights. Like, remember when you were a kid and you took your play sword and you stabbed your friend and right between your yes. arm and your stomach? Yeah, was, like that. <laughs> it was very Errol Flynn. Like, it, so it, it felt like 1930s oh. fighting action movie. And I was like, sir, this is, there was like flipping over people's backs. Slowly. And you slowly, I was yeah. like. I like how everybody just waits and they're yeah. like, oh, you want it? Okay, turn. cool. Okay, now now I'm supposed to parry and thrust? Fantastic. Yep. Let's do that. Oh, yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> also, the only thing the Beastmaster seemed truly focused on during this whole fight scene was Tanya Roberts. <laughs> if he rode into the temple, grabbed yeah. Kira, and rode away into the sunset, not freeing or helping anyone else, I would not have been surprised. Uh, honestly <laughs> it was i was like why are you so like boobmatized i'm like don't get me wrong beautiful woman but the whole reason he set out was to get revenge yeah and then he's all like oh but that changed care? very quickly how you doing i mean <laughs> we could just leave this all behind and me yeah. and you can go somewhere quiet you know because he know was willing other. to drop the revenge thing if she just ran 100 percent. yeah yeah like, dude <laughs> He was all like, I don't need through. to avenge, I don't need to avenge my, my father or my entire village. It's fine. Yeah, my dog. My dog. Yeah. John Wick avenged his dog <laughs> yeah. with gusto, and he did not get distracted. No, not once. Beastmaster, mm, failing, failing in life. Despite being stabbed, Mayax is revived by a witch, and when he attempts to kill Dar, Kodo sacrifices him to cause the high priest to fall into the sacrificial flames. I forgot about this, and I'll be honest, I was a little sad. I was super like, sad. I one, was like, no! Yeah, one, the ferrets were cool. Two, I'm sure they just threw that ferret in the fire. Yeah. Like, you think they put a fire suit on a ferret? No, they probably paid another buck and got another ferret. Well, cool no, life. they probably had him, like, had Rip Torn, like, fall. And protect and then, the ferret from fire? Yeah, yeah. I don't think he fell into the fire. They probably, because you don't see him actually going into the fire. You see him going into the pit and then you just see fire. You don't actually see what's in the fire. Because I was looking, because I was waiting for that ferret to crawl out and he never did. No, life's tough. Ferrets die. Being a dog. I was mad about that though. (laughs) Ferrets were my favorite part of this entire fucking movie. And I was like, you're going to kill a ferret? First you kill the dog and now you're killing the ferret? Jesus. Yeah, they killed the ferret. I forgot all about it. And I'm like, ah, fuck. They killed the ferret. Now, did they kill the last witch? Yes. Yes. Okay. And uh, right by the barrel up on top of the thing. Okay. Up, right. Yeah. And then she like poofs and the, yeah. the coat That's falls. Right. The, the victory is short lived as the June Horde, Jun Horde approaches a rock. Arriving by nightfall to face the trap Dar and the people set for them, just putting sand over the moat. Mm-hmm. Tal is wounded as Dar succeed, succeeds in burning most of the Juns alive while defeating their chieftain before the birdmen arrive, consume those remaining. Yes, the amulet. He gives it to the bird and it caws and flies away. The horde arriving at the gate was very impressive. Not the wooden yes. sticks they were holding, but no. the whole line of, of, of horses and men were pretty cool. But we need uh, to rewind a little bit because uh, when they're at the temple after they've, you know, killed Mayax and R.E.P. Ferret and Beastmaster grabs the ferret and walks halfway down. Did they say, because I'm trying to remember, but I'm like, I can't remember anybody saying anything. Like, what are we going to do about the horde, or what are we going to do about the June, whatever? Did anybody say that? Yeah. Or did it 
Yes. Yes. They said we one guy, they're like, we have to fight. And everyone was like, yeah. And then you had one guy, probably okay. me. We got to run. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, someone says, do we fight or flee? And then they look at Tal. Tal looks at Beastmaster. Beastmaster is like, we fight. But nobody actually mentions who they're going to fight. Right. Or flee from. So I was like, who are we fighting? Yeah, but you saw that dust cloud coming in the distance. <laughs> Everything is speculation in this movie. It's all in your own imagination. It's like a oh, yeah. own adventure. Yeah. This ending wasn't totally bad. Like the fight with the main horde guy wasn't yeah. that bad, actually. What was stupid was once the horde rode their horses into the moat and the tar, yeah. it was as if they forgot they were going to set it on fire because the one guy looked like, oh, shit, that was my job. <laughs> and he grabs like a, a flame and starts running and they just shoot him with a bow and arrow. Then Tall, the kid, he grabs yeah. it and he gets shot with an arrow. I'm like, really? Not one of you thought to have an arrow ready to set on fire? Thank you. The, a flaming arrow. <laughs> yeah. Flaming arrow. Like that's all you I can shoot from behind the wall. Yep. Yeah. No, have a bunch of them. Head your out bets. in the open. No. Yeah. But also the guy who was working the gate out in the open, like just standing there. Yeah. That's to like, a bunch of people that they call the horde because there are tons of them. With yeah. Arrows. <laughs> no, no. They're just it all is. like, guys, it's okay. I'll just be standing out here waiting. And then, yep. you know, I'll eventually throw some fire on the, on the moat. Not now, but eventually, maybe. Dar kills the leader. Then the Hawkmen show up and start eating everyone else. Uh huh. Not mad about that. No. The following day, Seth invites Dar to be the new king. But Dar explains that Tal would make a better king and he leaves a rook. Mm -hmm. Not only does Kira show up behind him out of fucking nowhere again, <laughs> Dar is on top of a giant rock formation. Like, how did you not see her struggling and probably making grunting noises trying to get up the fucking thing? And what She's the fuck are you doing back thing. up on top of a rock formation? He has to look over the entire valley. Yeah, I must think to the rock formation. <laughs> fuck. Starts swinging his sword around, lops off Tanya Roberts' head. <laughs> Dar sets off into the wild with Kira, Rue, or Ra, Sharok, and Podo, who has given birth to two baby ferrets. I forgot about the baby ferrets. The when they popped up, I was like, baby ferret. And that is our movie. Wow. <laughs> when the movie's bad, we talk a lot longer. <laughs> we really do, because there's a lot to go over. There was a lot to unpack in this movie. There was yes. a lot to unpack. All right. What is your score? Skip it. Skip it? Unless, and the only reason I would say this, if you and your friends want to get drunk and watch a shitty movie to make fun of, this is your movie. There's more than enough material for you to pick it apart, to joke around, to, you know, kind of make little jokes and catchphrases and go back and forth about. However, this is, this is just a really bad movie. Like, it's not fun. It's not entertaining to watch. You're going to spend half your time being like, what the fuck? So unless you're purposely wanting to watch a movie to make fun of, skip this movie. Just skip it. What do you think? Uh, What's your rating? My score. The Beastmaster is a bad movie, but it tries. It tries so hard. It is obvious that they intended to present a grand spectacle of epic adventure and swords play, and in 1982, maybe they did. Uh, I certainly remember it that way. <laughs> Nostalgia is great. Mistakes are great. Dialogue is horrible. The acting varies wildly. Mm. They used a helicopter. It was quite obvious. They tossed ferrets into danger with haphazard neglect. They hair dyed a tiger. I'm sure the eagle took someone's eye out. They built miniatures and stood actors beside them to manifest the illusion of a great distance. It looked ridiculous. Yes, the movie is bad, but I did have fun watching this. I had fun looking at Tanya Robert boobies. I had fun watching all the badness. The story is hard to follow because it's stupid. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. The action goes from one extreme to the next. Play fighting with wooden swords to literally blowing up straw huts for no reason other than just to do it. The magic of this movie to me is that everyone seemed to try or at least have fun. 
the magic of this movie is they really wanted to make an epic sword and sorcerer movie filled with adventure and fantasy, and they exceeded. It's not in the way they planned. And I love that they tried. I love the abundance of action with no gore. I love the magic and monsters and them knowing their limits and saying, fuck it, we're going to do it anyways. Will I watch Beastmaster again? Not anytime soon. I will watch it, preferably, like we said, with someone. Mm. This would be a great watching it with a couple buddies and friends. I say this movie is so bad, it's good. Everything about it screams horrible. And everything I watch reaffirms it. Yet it was it was fun. Buy it. Hang a poster on your wall. Use said poster to create a van art mural that will make all the other Dodge Caravan owners jealous with envy. <laughs> if we had a budget, I would have done that. <laughs> of course. We, we have a Dodge Caravan for all the kids. I would fucking, I would have done it. <laughs> Just for this podcast. Ah. Uh. Yeah. Your poor children. Your poor oh, children. That would be awesome. See, All I right. I think if this movie didn't have as many villains, and I just chose like if it just had one villain, and it rode through with that, I'd be like, cool. Yeah. Down. I can I can deal with it. like it would have been a much much better. Also, if the Beastmaster never became the Sleaze Master, I'd be way more into this movie. But there was there was just too much for me. So it doesn't make you want to see part two? No, not even a little bit. <laughs> Although I did watch the TV show. I thought that was cheesy goodness. I don't remember it now. I might have just watched it because of like the lead actor was hot. But yeah, he was um, a daytime soap opera actor, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. And Australian. Yeah. Very attractive man. All right. So that was the Beastmaster. And until the next movie, we remember liking. Congratulations. You just had one of your childhood movie memories vindicated. Or they just eviscerated it. I don't know. This is a generic one-size-fits-all type of ending to the podcast. So thank you for listening, and please join Anna and Jimmy next time for another episode of the I Remember Liking That Movie podcast. If you dare to go back and watch that movie you remember liking, 